Hey everyone, it's Ashley. Welcome back. So today is not a review day, so I apologize for that. So if you are not interested in that, you can just click away. But today I'm going to talk about um, some drama. I usually don't get into drama, but it's something that I feel a little bit passionate about, and it is the issues with the new Jaclyn Hill lipsticks. You know, people have said that they are seeing what looks like mold or black spots or fibers in their lipsticks, and I did order two lipsticks, and on both of them, um, there are some gritty spots, so that is, you know, a little questioning. So I am going to do a little bit of an experiment on them. I will talk about that in a minute. But first I want to address the video that she put out about her lipsticks. She is quoted with saying, every single ingredient in my lipstick is new and FDA approved. So she says every ingredient, not her product. So therefore her product is not FDA approved. And then she shows these documents and she says, you know, you can look at them, you can rip them apart. And the documents show a certificate of good manufacturing practices as defined by the FDA. That is not FDA approval at all. That just means her lab is doing good manufacturing practices and every lab should be doing good manufacturing practices. So there was no letter of FDA approval on the screen, not even of her ingredients. So I'm gonna read this says, according to FDA.gov, the FDA does not have legal authority to approve cosmetics before they go on the market, and they do, however, approve the color additives that is used in them. So the ingredients are FDA approved, like I said, not the product, because the FDA doesn't have the legal authority. However, they can regulate them if there are reliable complaints about the product. So I'm wondering if the FDA is going to delve into this. And so just taking a really major example here, I myself can get FDA approved products, put them together in my toilet and then sell them. That doesn't make them FDA approved. That doesn't make them safe. And that does not make them sanitary. Not saying that these were made in a toilet. Obviously they were not. I'm just using a very dramatic example. So Jacqueline did go on to talk about the black dots on the lipstick and she says it's during the cooling process. So that is telling me that um, the lipsticks are charred a little bit. They're not being cooled properly. And then she talked about how when they're mixing the products in the big vat, they're not properly mixing the raw ingredients because they're producing so many and doing it so fast. So that to me says we cut corners. Revlon doesn't have this issue. I could go to the dollar store and get a lipstick and I don't see this issue. So if you want to talk about making a lot of product, think of a drugstore product that is in every Walmart, CVS, online, Amazon. It's in every drugstore you go to, they make millions of lipsticks and they never have this problem. She also says that they use cotton gloves because she didn't want smears on the lipstick components. Like I said, I've never seen this problem with Revlon or any other lipstick product in the past. So this is definitely a new one for me. So my big question is, where is the quality control? The quality control should be that they are taking a lipstick off the product line during multiple stages and when it is done and checking these. And how have they not seen this? I know she's saying it's like 1%, but apparently it's a lot of people that are having issues so i really don't know how they haven't seen any of these problems that is just my opinion so therefore i am a science nerd i am a certified molecular biologist i have been in the field for 11 years and i want to do a little bit of a test granted it's not going to be a molecular based test i'm not looking for any presence of anybody's DNA or anything like that. I don't have that type of equipment. That is thousands and thousands of dollars. But I am going to see if there is the presence of mold in this lipstick, and there might not be, and I really hope that there isn't. So I'm kind of switching gears here, switching hats, and I'm gonna be a microbiologist. So um, I'm definitely not a professional in that respect, but I just want to do a little bit of and experiment and just see what comes out so that you guys know and I know what is going on. 
So I did swatch these lipsticks on the back of my hand. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna cut the tops of these off. And then using a fresh new scalpel, cut another little piece of the lipstick, smear it on a Petri dish, put it in an incubator, which I did buy. I bought a lot of uh, geeky stuff for this and see what happens between one to four days and I'm gonna incubate it at 90 degrees. So along with that, I'm gonna do a control, which has nothing on it at all. Another lipstick that I have swatched on the back of my hand, cutting the top off and then using the middle. And then a lipstick that I have not used at all, still in the packaging. And throughout one to four days, I am going to take video, take pictures, assess what's going on and see if anything is growing in these lipsticks um, like I said, I really, really hope that there is nothing. So if anything, then there's just a little bit of fibers, some cooling issues with the lipstick, not the end of the world. But when we get into mold, then that's a big deal. There may be other chemicals in it that I don't know. I am not a chemist. I'm not doing chemical analysis, but I am putting on my little sciencey hat or science gloves and just testing these out. So let's see what happens. So first things first, lab safety, cleanliness, putting on new gloves. And I want to show you that these Revlon lipsticks are completely unopened, unused. So I'm getting these jars out of their packages and taking the Petri dishes out of their packages. Everything is clean. I'm labeling everything. And these jars I'm going to use for the tops of the lipstick that I'm going to cut off. So everything I'm using is sterile, the scalpels are sterile, the cotton tip applicators are sterile, and because I touch stuff, I'm changing my gloves again. So starting off with Nude AF, I am just going to take a clean, sterile, individually wrapped scalpel and just cut the top off of it into this jar that I'm gonna use for later. Then taking a clean new sterile cotton tip applicator, I'm just gonna swatch this guy. And then using zigzag motions, just swipe it on the plate. And then you want to store your plates upside down in the incubator, which I will be doing here in a minute. But I've touched that. I feel contaminated. New gloves. New gloves in between every single sample. And I'm just going to do the same thing for the other lipstick as if the unswatched Revlon lipstick, the swatched Revlon lipstick. And then about three days into the experiment, I realized I don't have a positive control. So I just included my phone here because we all know that phones are disgusting and I know I'm gonna get some positive stuff from it. So I'm incubating at about 90 degrees, give or take a you know degree. There's a second thermometer to just validate the temperature and we'll see what we get. So I made slides with the tops of the lipstick, just swiped it on there, put a cover slip on it 
and using a digital microscope up to 1000x. So the first one is by MAC Blankety. This lipstick is over two years old, so it is super dirty. But as you can see, the pigment and shimmers are really finely milled, really distributed. I don't see any like form potties. It looks pretty clean, very nice. Next up is from Charlotte Tilbury. This is eight months old. This also has finely milled, really distributed shimmers. But in this one, we are seeing some black spots that could be pigmentation that could be from my lips i don't know but it is pretty evenly distributed throughout this lipstick swatch then we have the revlon nude attitude and this is a matte lipstick these have some bigger shimmer pieces than the two previous more expensive lipsticks but this is pretty clean i mean this is an unswatched lipstick it's pretty darn clean and then the swatched one we're kind of getting more of the same maybe a little dot here and there could be from the back of my hand kind of expected but looks pretty good and then we get into the Jaclyn Hill lipsticks this is nude AF there's a lot of foreign objects or pigment in here I don't know what this is you know I I'm not a pathologist but we definitely have some maybe undistributed pigment in here and some undistributed shimmer and we have hair super gross super gross and then we have another hair and you can see some pigment right there to the left and just a lot of really undistributed shimmer pieces now as if is the worst there's big chunks of undistributed shimmer pieces a nice white fiber and just a lot of this dark stuff going on whatever this is I don't know what this is but as I move through this slide it's distributed throughout this entire slide these pieces of whatever whatever it is it's not right and there's some more undistributed shimmer so one day into this the clean plate is clean looks good the nude AF not showing anything yet which is good same thing for as if Kind of the same for all the plates here still nice and clean and when we get to that phone plate within a day we're already seeing some bacterial colonies it's pretty disgusting which is sadly expected so then after six days here's what we've got the clean plate is clean yay the nude af not so bad there is one little dot there to the side it appears to be a single bacterial colony likely from maybe airborne contaminant i don't know my house is not a clean room but it looks like there's no growth on the lipstick so not concerned here as if um two little bacterial colonies possible source of bacteria maybe not bad though for what i was expecting the swatch rub on we have a huge bacterial colony here my hands must have been filthy this is disgusting and i'm saying it was my hand because when you look at the unswatched revlon it is clean there's nothing there so that leads me to believe in my opinion that that bacterial colony was from my hand super gross the phone here only after three days this is disgusting this is expected um this is my positive control and holy guacamole this is gross so in summary, I didn't find any mold, no significant bacterial growth. The lipsticks obviously were not properly mixed. There was pigmentation and shimmer just throughout all of it. And we did see some hairs and fibers um, and that was expected as well. All right, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Now go have yourself an awesome day.